Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to learn some new concepts which is a part of 37th lecture. As we have seen in the previous lecture, there are many iterative methods where we need to solve the system by using iterative methods. There are two consequences. One is that we will not be able to find out a solution by using a direct methods such as Gaussian elimination method, gauss jordan method, LU factorization and so on and so forth. In contrary to that, we will have iterative methods. These iterative methods normally they do start with some initial vector and then we proceed and in the course of time they do get stabilized and every time we do compute the error associated with that computation. So after few number of steps we could see that this would become a an approximate solution to the given system. Well, let us start with the basic idea of the iterative methods. The direct methods based on triangulation of a matrix A becomes prohibitive in terms of computer time and storage if matrix A is quite large. There are practical situations such as the discretization of PDEs where the maximum matrix size can be as large as several hundred thousand or even more. The pains, the size of the matrix will become very big to the order of 10 power 6, 7, 8, 9 and so on and so forth. For direct methods such as Gaussian elimination and QR factorization methods becomes very impracticable and we will not be able to find out a approximate solution to these systems. Moreover, during the triangulation process, the sparsity gets lost to a considerable extent. So, at the end, we need to solve a dense kind of matrix which becomes bottleneck and requires high level storage. So, this is very, very, you know, the very, very crucial step because once the storage becomes bigger and bigger and solving such a system becomes very difficult. Such problems, it is advisable to use a class of methods called iterative methods and never alter the matrix A and requires only storage of few vectors of length n at a time. These methods unlike direct methods do not produce exact solution but rather aim at alternatively improving solutions at each iteration. There are three well known iterative methods in the numerical competition and a numerical linear algebra and approximations. These are all very well known and more prominent especially for solving the engineering and physical situations of real life systems. Jacobi method is the first and foremost one, Jacobi method. The second one is Gauss-Seidel method and third one is successive over relaxation method and then we will have Krylov subspace methods. Krylov subspace methods include conjugate gradient method for symmetric positive definite systems, the generalized minimal residual method, third one is the biconjugate gradient method. 
by conjugate gradient method and fourth one is the quasi minimal residual method the quasi minimal residual method for non symmetric systems krylo subsets methods to compute extreme eigen values of large and spare systems now let us look at into the practicality and practical procedure of the jacobi method the basic idea behind these methods is to first write the system ax is equal to b in an equivalent form x is equal to bx plus d and then starting with an initial approximation x of 1 of the solution vector x to generate a sequence of approximations x k iteratively defined by x of k plus 1 is equal to b x of k plus d and k is equal to 1 to etc with a hope that under certain mild conditions the sequence xk converges to the solution as k tends to infinity to solve the linear system ax is equal to b iteratively using this idea we need to know how to write the system ax is equal to b in the form of the just previously spoke and how that is x is equal to bx plus d so this is x is equal to bx plus d how x of 1 should be chosen so that the iteration 2 converges to the limit or under what sort of assumptions the iteration converges to the limit with an arbitrary choice x of 1. There are three well known classical iterative methods that is Jacobi method, Gauss Seidel method and successive or relaxation method. These three methods differ in a way matrix B and vector D are computed. Computations of xk plus 1 from xk by each of these methods in equation 2 are shown like this. That means you will have x of k is equal to x1 of k, x2 of k, like that you will have xn of k transpose. Essentially, we can write in this form xi of k plus 1 is 1 over ai. Already we assumed that aii will be free from 0. Multiplied with bi minus summation j is equal to 1 to n aij times of xj of k and for every i is equal to 1 to etc. Matrix form of the Jacobian iteration we can write it as a is equal to d plus l plus u where d is the diagonal matrix and l is the lower triangular matrix and u is the upper triangular matrix. So the form of d is you will have a11, a22, ann these are all zeros and the lower triangular matrix is lower triangular matrix is see this is the main diagonal this is the sub diagonal this is the diagonal this is the diagonal and above all all are zeros so it's a lower triangular matrix with 
zeros on the main diagonal. Remember that. And upper triangle matrix is zeros on the main diagonal. Zeros, zeros, zeros. And this will become a non-zero values. Upper triangle with zeros on the main diagonal. Define bj is equal to minus of d inverse l plus u and dj is equal to d inverse of b. Then the Jacobi iteration 3 can be written as x of k plus 1 will be equivalent to bj times of x of k plus d of j. x of k plus 1 is equal to bj x of k plus d of j. Since d is the diagonal matrix, so you can have d inverse. Now when it comes to the gauss seidel iteration method, look at this xi of k plus 1 will be equivalent to 1 over a i i. So, this a i i is not equal to 0. 1 over a i i times of b i minus summation j is equal to 1 to i minus 1 a i j x j raised to the power k plus 1 minus summation j is equal to 1 i plus 1 to n a i j x j k where i is equal to 1 to etc. The idea is to use each component as soon as it is available. In the computation of the next component this is not done in the Jacobi method. So, the main difference is the idea is to use each new component as soon as it is available. So, that means whatever value is being available, you update it each time, need not have to wait for the next variable. For instance, if x1 is known, just use it this x1 while computing x2. Similarly, use this x2 while computing x3. Then matrix form of gauss seidel iteration technique will become like this. B gauss seidel is minus of D plus L whole inverse times of U and uh, this can be written as D plus L whole inverse times of B. Then XK plus 1 is equal to B times of gauss seidel X of K plus D times of gauss seidel. So, the basic idea is in the Jacobi method, you are using all unknowns, let us say x1, x2, x3 at one go and in the gauss seidel you do not need to wait for completion of one iteration, whatever is known x1, you are using in the subsequent iteration and keep on doing like this. That is the basic difference between Jacobi and gauss seidel. And when it comes to the successive or relaxation method, here we use what we call a successive parameter, which we call it as relaxation parameter. Relaxation parameter that is xi of k plus 1 will be equivalent to omega upon aii. So, this aii not equal to 0 times of bi minus summation j is equal to 1 to i minus 1 aij xj of k plus 1 minus j is equal to i plus 1 
to n a i j x j of k plus 1 minus omega times of x of k for i is equal to 1 to etc. Matrix form of the successive relaxation will define B of successive relaxation is D plus omega L whole inverse times of 1 minus omega times of D minus omega times of U and DSOR is omega times of D plus omega L whole inverse times of B. Then the above iteration can be written as x of k plus 1 is equal to b s o r x of k plus d s o r. So, x of k plus 1 is b s o r x of k plus d s o r. Now, for the sake of brevity, if omega happens to be 1, then the successive relaxation method becomes identical to the gauss seidel method. If omega happens to be 1, the successive relaxation method becomes identical to the gauss seidel method. If omega happens to be greater than 1, then in computing the k plus 1th iteration, in computing the k plus 1th iteration, more weight is placed on the most current value than when omega is less than 1. With the hope that convergence will be faster, the number omega is called the relaxation factor. So, we call this omega as the relaxation factor. Now, having had the theory, let us look at into a simple example how we can solve by using Gauss Jacobi method, Gauss Seidel method, and successive or relaxation method. I have a coefficient matrix A. For the sake of brevity, I have taken 3 by 3, and starting vector is let us say. 0, 0, 0. As you could see, 5x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 7. So, that means x1 is 1. x1, 5x2, x3. That means x2 is equal to 1. x1, x2, 5x3. So, x3 is equal to 1. So, you will have a true solution 1 1 1 1. Now, if you apply Jacobi method, see the competition over here. I started with 0 0 0. So, that means in the first iteration, so this is 7 by 5, which is 1.4. Again 7 by 5 which is 1.4, again 7 by 5 which is 1.4 and when it comes to the second iteration 0 0.84, 0 0.84, 0 0.84 that means all these three values I am using at a time. Look at this Gauss Seidel in the first step. So initially I will have 7 by 5, 5 1 of 5. 5, 4, yeah. 1.4, it is fine. So, whatever this 1.4 is for x1, that I am using while computing x2. So, obviously, this x2 will become 1.1200. Similarly, for the third matrix, x3. So, whatever x1 is known and whatever x2 is known, I am using it 
while computing the x3. So I do get this as x3. 0.8960 and with omega is equal to 0 0.2 and with omega is equal to 1.2 that is relaxation parameter. So x1 is 1.6800, x2 is 1.2768 and x3 is 0.9704. Now when you go for the next iteration, see that this is for Jacobi method and this is for Gauss Seidel 0 0.9968, 1.0214, and SOR method with omega is equal to 1.2, 0 0.8047, 0 0.99860, 1 1.0531. And Jacobi method you see and Gauss Seidel you will have like this. And SOR this is the matrix. So if you look at after 5 iterations, look at this. This is by using Gauss Jacobi where the true solution is 1, 1, 1 as already we did it and this is for Gauss Seidel and this is for Gauss successive or relaxation. After 6 steps you can see x1, x2, x3, x1, x2, x3, x1, x2, x3. So after 6 iterations you will be getting exact solution, this is the exact. So the power of Jacobi method, gauss seidel method and sexual relaxation, we already seen it. Let us make a comment over here. The matrix A above is strictly row diagonally dominant. The matrix A is strictly row diagonally dominant and positive definite. That means all the eigenvalues are greater than or equal to 0. The Jacobi and gauss seidel method converges for strictly row diagonally dominant matrices with an arbitrary initial approximation. That means we started with some arbitrary initial approximation and the SOR converges for a symmetric positive definite matrix if omega lies between 0 to 2. Stopping criteria for iteration 2, it is natural to wonder when iteration 2 can be terminated if epsilon is greater than 0. Where the tolerance? That means the current value minus previous value is less than or equal to let us say 1 by 2 times or 10 power minus 6 which I call it as epsilon. Then I can stop the iterations so that the method becomes a convergent. There are several criteria that can be used. The one that is the most convenient and widely used is the relative residual norm. That is norm of B minus AXK upon norm of B, which will be less than epsilon. That is B minus AXK upon norm of B less than epsilon. A user might want to stop if the number of iterations exceeds the maximum number of iterations permitted to perform. Convergence of the Jacobi, gauss Seidel, and SOR techniques. It is often hard to make a good guess as to the initial approximation x of 1. Thus, it will be nice to have conditions 
that will guarantee the convergence of iteration for arbitrary choice. So in the following we derive such a condition that is iteration convergence theorem. The iteration convergence theorem is you will have x of k plus 1 is bx of k plus d converges to a limit with an arbitrary choice of the initial approximation x of 1 if and only if b of k tends to 0 as k tends to infinity that is b is convergent matrix. So we will write it as x is equal to bx plus d and xk plus 1 is bx of k plus d. We have x minus xk plus 1 is equal to b times of x minus x of k. So, this is true for any value of k, we can write it as x minus x of k is equal to b times of x minus x of k minus 1. Substituting 4, 5, we will have the like this. x minus x of k plus 1 is equal to b of 2 x minus x of k minus 1. Continuing this process, k times, we can write the matrix in this form. x minus x of k plus 1 is equal to b of k times of x minus x of 1. This shows that x of k converges to the solution x for any arbitrary choice of x of 1. If and only if b of k is approaches to 0 as k tends to infinity. Convergence in terms of spectral radius. Convergence in terms of spectral radius and matrix norm. That is what we call it as a Jordan canonical form. It can be shown that B is a convergent matrix if and only if the spectral radius B is that is rho of B is less than or equal to norm of B. So norm of B is nothing but here 2 norm. Thus if norm of B is less than 1 then the convergence is guaranteed. Computationally it is a lot easier to check than finding the spectral radius. Unfortunately, the converse of this fact is not true. Let us make a very wide statement. A necessary and sufficient condition for the convergence of iteration 2 for any arbitrary choice of 1 is that rho of b is less than 1. A sufficient condition is that norm of B is less than 1 for a subordinate matrix that is 2 norm. We now apply the above result to identify classes of matrices for which the Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel method converges for any choice of x of 1. The Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel methods for diagonally dominant matrices. If A is strictly row diagonally dominant, then the Jacobi method converges for any arbitrary choice of the initial approximation. So the thrust would rely on the diagonal dominance. That means mod of A11 is greater than or equal to some of the elements in the particular row. Similarly, mod of A22 is greater than or equal to some of the elements in the particular row. So it should agree for all the rows then we say that the matrix is diagonally dominant. Let us see the proof. Since Aij is strictly rho diagonally dominant, then we will have this mod of Aij is greater than sum of the elements in that particular row. So we will write this as a matrix B, that is this is the zeros, right, these are all non-zeros. The absolute row sum of B of each is less than 1. That means norm of Bj infinity is less than 1. 
So what is the corollary? If A is strictly rho diagonally dominant, then the gauss seidel method converges for any arbitrary choice of x of 1. So the proof is very very simple. Let lambda be an eigenvalue and let u is equal to un u to un be the corresponding eigenvector of gauss seidel iteration, then we can have rho of b gauss seidel is less than 1. That means the spectral radius is less than 1. From the expression, we can write it as minus of u u is equal to d plus l times of lambda u. So, when you or we can write in the summation form like this minus of summation j is equal to i plus 1 to n a i j u j is lambda times of this matrix. So, lambda times of a i i u i will be like this, this matrix. Let u k be the largest component having magnitude 1 of the vector, then from the above equation we can write like this. Mod of lambda a k k is less than or equal to mod lambda times of this expression plus this expression. So, or else we can write like this. This is the final form. A j is the i th and jth element. A k k is the main diagonal. So, since A is strictly rho diagonally dominant, that means mod of A k k minus summation j is equal to 1 to k minus 1 A i j. So, this would follow this inequality. That means rho of B g s is less than 1. So, in all the cases, spectral radius will define the convergence of the scheme. That is, remark is, it is usually true that the greater the diagonal dominance of matrix A, the faster the convergence of the Jacobi method. However, there are simple counter examples that shows that this is not always true. So, for example, you look at this 2 by 2 example. This example was produced by Richard's Varga. You see that R S Varga. It is easy to see that rho of B of A is greater than rho of B of a2, if you compute this, spectral radius of A1 is greater than spectral radius of A2, that is maximum rho sum. So, in the today lecture, what we learned is how actually the iteration techniques can be applied for a system of equations, how they are useful as compared to the direct methods, and I am sure that this would have gained this would have been given much insight into the system of equations. Thank you very much. I will stop over here. Thank you.